I'm here with uh, Dennis Sakaoglu. Dennis Sakaoglu has uh, a bachelor from Karlsruhe and he has also a bachelor from Lincoln University. And uh, his uh, bachelor thesis here at Karlsruhe was about market research on European food in China. And you have carried out your market research and then started your own business in China. Please tell us a little bit about your business there. Yes, okay. Our business in China, we originally wanted to start to do a kebab shop, a kebab production in China. We started to do that in the south of China. You have Turkish roots, actually. I have Turkish roots, yeah. My father is Turkish, my mother German. And I was planning to do that together with a German friend of mine. And the kebab project was okay for us. Mm -hmm. It went very well. We experienced many things. We, we got uh, many experiences out from that. But after one year we just recognized that that part of China is not really where we want to live. Mm -hmm. We were actually planning to go to a big city to mm -hmm. really live this big city life in China. Mm -hmm. You started in a tourist region it south of uh, Beijing, I think. That's true, yeah. Yes. It is a tourist region, it's a seasonal business, like six months of the year it's mm -hmm. really busy and there are a lot of people and six months of the year it's really boring and there's mm -hmm. not, there is not a, lo a lot around there. Mm -hmm. So that was the main reason. We had Italian business partners there mm -hmm. and after discussing with them we could um, come to an arrangement that they take over our shares of the business mm -hmm. and we can move on and go to Beijing and do what we really want to do. The problem for us always was that we couldn't find the real good location where we can start our first restaurant. Is it in general a problem to find a good location in China? I think that's I think that's a general problem all over the world <laughs> to mm. find a real good location yes, yes. because Especially in, in the restaurant business or restaurant and mm -hmm. bar business, the location is very important. Sure, it's possible to do good business also in a location that's not very, um, like in a very busy area mm -hmm. because you can do a lot with marketing, you can bring mm -hmm. people in, but this takes time and mm -hmm. this also costs a lot of money mm -hmm. till you get to the point that you start to earn mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. So for us always was clear that we want to start in a busy place. Mm -hmm. We really want to wait till we find the right location that we don't have to have this uh, time of one year perhaps mm -hmm. where you really don't earn money, just put money into the business yes. till you start to earn money. That We didn't have this uh, capital to invest mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. So we were waiting in Beijing after we came back. We found the location. We actually paid some deposit. Mm -hmm. Um, because the people who were in there wanted to leave the business mm -hmm. and then at the last minute they changed their mind and we got our deposit back and we were without a location again. Mm -hmm. But then the uh, old friend of um, Stefan, my business partner in China, asked him who already had um, two locations, one location with three um Story is one location with two. Mm -hmm. um, asked us because his business was actually popular at that mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. but in numbers not very successful. Mm -hmm. So he asked us if we want to manage that because he heard what we did in South China. He saw all the pictures. Mm -hmm. He talked to people who saw our bar in in South China, mm -hmm. who saw our production in South China, and was actually quite impressed what mm -hmm. we did there. Mm -hmm. So he asked us if we could manage that and if we would consider to, to get business partners with him. Mm -hmm. And he said, sure, yeah, let's do that. Let's just for three months try mm -hmm. how that works to work together. Mm -hmm. And then let's decide if we can do something mm -hmm. like that. We started to work, everything, it was very hard at the beginning to mm -hmm. come into a company that is already existing. To re at, the, at the beginning we were outsiders completely, mm -hmm. like we were two people sitting in a bar we didn't have an office that time. Mm -hmm. We were sitting in the bar with our laptops and we were just outsiders who nobody was talking to us <laughs> actually. We were just yeah. doing some stuff. And now when I talk to employees who are still there, mm -hmm. they're like, you know, you started to work here and you guys were for three months, you guys were sitting there with your laptops and we all were like, 
what are they doing all day? <laughs> <laughs> like, what's, what's their deal? <laughs> But then they saw, they started to see what we did because what we were doing is actually we were planning to change um, the existing Mexican menus. Mm -hmm. We were planning to completely redecorate and the place and do a big construction in the place. Mm -hmm. We were preparing a German restaurant, mm -hmm. a complete new German restaurant and we were uh, planning an Italian restaurant. Mm -hmm. And what we first did, we did the Italian restaurant mm -hmm. in the third floor. Mm -hmm. Then we changed the complete bar of the, like we destroyed the whole bar in the second floor mm -hmm. and did the new bar inside, changed the food menus, um, organized the whole place because when we came in, cables were everywhere. It was mm -hmm. just not organized at all. Mm -hmm. So we organized that. So that was the first step. Mm -hmm. And everybody was thinking that that time we also launched a new salary system, mm -hmm. which was, for our sense, actually a little bit too much performance-based. Mm -hmm. But it was arrangement what we could do with our Chinese mm -hmm. business partner. He wanted a very performance-based mm -hmm. uh, salary system. Mm -hmm. We didn't, and we found an arrangement how we can mm -hmm. do it. Um, by that, we... At the end, the salaries were raised by at least 30% mm -hmm. of each person mm -hmm. in, the, in the business, which mm -hmm. gave us the opportunity to, to keep our people. Mm -hmm. But the problem was, we launched the salary system in October, like last 2010. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. 2010. And the thing is, we have outside area, and business actually is always better mm -hmm. in summertime. Mm -hmm. Then in winter time, so the employees were like, yeah, nice. Now you make a new salary system. Now winter comes, revenues go down again. Mm -hmm. And we again don't get the money we are actually mm -hmm. dreaming of. But we were very confident because of the changes we mm -hmm. did. And because we knew that it takes time that people recognize it. And it really starts to, to give a result. Um, we were very confident actually that, that this will be all right. And mm -hmm. that we will do even better revenues and mm. it proved right at the end. Our right. revenues went up. Right. And, and what, what are the general problems? Doing business uh, in China for a European, this is a very strange world. And, and what is easy going and what is really difficult? Okay. Perhaps let's start with the easy going because mm. that's less. <laughs> <laughs> so what I like about China is that everything at the end of the day, everything is possible. 